Oh, the 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 picture came in in the back. Oh, the picture's up. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Oh, you got uh, you, you got the plant there. Man, we're too, we are we are two really just responsible millennials right now. We're we're figuring it out. I'm I'm shocked you didn't say responsible. Finish it for me, man. Delinquent. There we go. <laughs> good good friends know the branding. It's all good. I identify with that wholeheartedly. So I think I, I really think it's something that I'm gonna run with because I've had so many people like the response that I've gotten from it. It just, it's been overwhelmingly like I would people, I feel like people would legit, you know, wear that type of apparel or, or whatever, even if they don't love me, it's just a cool concept. You know what I'm saying? Well, think about what it represents too. I mean, I think it represents this balance that is missing in a lot of people's lives. It's so, we feel so pressured to go to one end or the other in a lot of spectrums. And it's like, no, I can be responsible and I can be a fucking delinquent. Like it's, you know, it's. Uh, it, it, it seems like we have to choose one or the other a lot of the time. So, I, I mean, I love it, man. I think it's genius. I think as soon as you pop out with apparel, I'm going to buy a lot. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. No, I've, I've had, I've had other people say the same thing and it's just like, I'm, yeah, I'm going to, it's, it's, it's again, the never ending to do list. You know how that goes. Um, so of yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it at some point, but all right, Alex, real quick. Um, for, for the people who don't know, we can, we can formally start this little chat, I guess. I just want to at least give a little bit of background. Um, whatever you meet somebody new, wherever that is, and they say, Hey, Alex, what do you do? What do you tell them? You know, it's a great question, man. It's something that's evolved over the years because, uh, for the first four years of me in this position that I'm in right now. I didn't even know what to say. I used to say I work in the fitness industry, just super, super blanket. And that's kind of my, like, I don't want to talk about it. Now I say I'm a product manager for a personal trainer education company. Um, and people don't know what that means, which is also great. Uh, you know, if they care, you can ask me something and I'll go into it. Um, but that's, that's my go-to now. You know, if, if a stranger asks me, what do you do? I usually just say I'm a product manager for, for a fitness education company or personal trainer education company. Um, and right. it's, and it's just, just vague enough where people won't ask me questions, but also specific enough where people can feel satisfied that they know generally what it is that I do. But I don't even think that explains what I do. Really. I don't even know what I do. So <laughs> dude, you, you, wanna, you know, what's funny is I have a, um, I, I have a friend who just recently got moved to a different job position and he was he was talking to me about it. he's like yeah man I I like the job and stuff he was like but I really I still don't know to to this day like yeah. what I do he said our company is like grow the company's growing a lot and they just keep throwing people into the like hiring on new people but right. nobody has like a legit job role and they're just like hey here's a project that you need to probably handle right and then hey. so there you go uh, I mean. Uh, uh, I empathize with that so hard <laughs> yeah. because that's exactly what it is. I mean, so I work for the personal trainer development center and um, I mean, yeah, it's a fitness education company. It's a personal trainer education company. We provide business education, some fitness stuff, but not really. I mean, okay. Don't also, also don't downplay it. Anybody who's a personal trainer probably <laughs> also knows what the PTDC is, right? The personal training development center. He, Alex is, is hardcore downplaying it right now, but it is a, it's a, it correct, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a multi-million dollar company. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, for know, sure. It's legit. And uh, it's, we've helped a lot of people. And, um, you know, I've been working for them for seven years now in some capacity. I started part time as an intern. And then, and then um, we built the Online Trainer Academy. And that's how I kind of moved into the full time role. But, um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I, I empathize with that so much because so John Goodman, the, the owner of the company, he and I built the Online Trainer Academy, which is a business development course for personal trainers. And once that's done, it's kind of like, so what do we do now? Mm -hmm. And what do I do now? And so I ran the course for a long time and I was the operations manager and I hired the teams and, you know, I did random shit like um, CEC stuff, like got approved with companies, you know, just every little thing that you can think of, some budget stuff, some tech stuff, like I feel like I kind of dipped my toes in a lot of different things, which I enjoyed. Right. Um, we'll we'll talk real quick. Um, and and I don't want to, I don't want to stick on background too long because I know how that can be in certain podcasts. If you sure. just stick on the background forever. Uh, however, one of your posts was on your. It was the the text post that you had on Instagram that you sent to John Goodman whenever you mm. first started out because I think it can. 
uh, you know, people can hear you in this position, but they don't kind of see the the come up, right? And kind of all the free work and stuff you maybe did in the beginning. So maybe maybe talk about that a little bit, the genesis of it. For sure, man. Yeah, I'll give a, I'll give a super, super quick background on sure. it. I mean, so I was just a personal trainer back in the day and I was a fan of the PTDC and, and was just a customer of theirs. And um, did you go to college for for exercise science or anything like I that? I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, I got a degree in kinesiology. Yeah. Got it. All right. There you go. Um, I started out in journalism, funny enough, going back to the boxes that we feel like we have to, I'm like, what the fuck do I want to do anyway? Yeah. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, I, I planted a lot of seeds with John. I sent him multiple messages. I actually applied to, um, be mentored by him. He put out like this apprenticeship and I applied and we had to write a fucking handwritten letter to him and mail it in the mail. And I was in college at the time. This typical, is probably like nine t- years typical ago. Typical John. Typical John. Typical John. And I'm like, this guy. Um, <laughs> and, and, and it was basically in 500 words or less, explain to me why you're better than everybody else. Ooh. Um, and, and like, that was it. And it was a really interesting prompt. And I basically wrote about how I appreciate failing and like failure. And I almost seek failure out in order to move forward as opposed to make that like my fear and my avoidance as I actually go head first into failure, mm. at least the possibility of failure. And so that got me to the phone round and I'll make this super quick, but I basically bombed that because um, <laughs> I was terrified. I was like 21 and, and he was a celebrity to me at this point, you know, where you're like, oh my God, I'm finally going to talk to someone that I've seen behind a screen for two years. And sure who I think is well known in the industry and I look up to. And um, how'd you bomb he asked it? Me this, how'd you bomb what was that? How'd you bomb it? So he asked me this one question and I've asked this question to so many students I've worked with now and, and no one has an immediate answer. And I, I'd be curious to hear your answer as well, but it was what makes you, and this is obviously all in the fitness space, but what makes you a better personal trainer than someone who is 20 years older than you and has 15 more years experience than you? why would a client decide to work with you over that person um, who knows a lot more? And I basically gave some bullshit answer because in my head, the honest answer was, I have no idea. (laughs) I don't think they would work with me. I'm a fucking idiot. Sure. (laughs) sure. um, And so I, I gave some answer that I don't even remember what it was. And I'll never forget his response, which was, I don't think you understood the question. And I'm like, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> also, also <laughs> typical, also typical John for, for, okay. So just so I need everybody to know that I do have an episode with John Goodman, who, who he's talking about in the past. And it, yeah. it was an excellent episode, but I think if you listen to that, you can kind of get the, uh, demeanor and personality of John and you can understand this. Uh, you can appreciate this story a little bit better too. It's it. I mean, working for John now for the past seven years, it is so typical John. Um, <laughs> Great. So anyway, so then I, I bombed that and then pr- probably a year went by and that really haunted me. You know, I just, I just thought about that a lot. I wasn't used to failing a lot at that point in my life, ironically, even though I wrote about that and maybe that was a subconscious thing. But, um, one day in bed, man, I just started to think about an answer or this question. And it was like three or four in the morning. And I was like, oh my God, this is the answer. And I started to type it all out in my phone. And the very next day, and this is, again, it's probably like 10 to 12 months later, I sent him a message and I'm like, you don't remember me, but here's my answer to this question that you asked me a year ago in our eight minute phone conversation. And even nothing happened from there. He thought it was great. He's like, this is a super badass, you know, love to see it. Thanks for reaching out. And then I just kind of kept poking my head in and kept having conversations with him and kept saying like, obviously, you know, in, in my eyes, I knew he was someone that I wanted to work with. And I, and I, I liked the path that he was on and I knew I wanted to, it was worth the persistence in order to get my foot in the door. So then slowly, but surely he had an unpaid internship opportunity that I'm like, yes, give that to me. I was still in college at the time. And, um, once he wanted to build out the online trainer Academy, he's like, you want to be the project manager on it and help me build it out. And I said, absolutely. And here we are. (laughs) <laughs> wow, dude, that's that's so it's so interesting how those series of events can happen. But I think that the the persistence of you constantly showing up over and over again, and I think um, and I think this might have been some of the stuff that you talked about in your post. But but showing up, 
showing that you care, showing that you're empathetic, showing that you're willing to continue to, to further, this, further this relationship. And then to, to answer that question again, you know, 12 months later or something. I think that that's st- that type of stuff, that's the type of, per- like if I was, you know, later on down the road and I'm going to hire somebody or something, it's sure. like that type of dude is, or, or, or gal is like who I'm going for, for sure. For sure, man. And I mean, think all it communicates too, because th- there's no instant gratification there. There's no, I'm in this for me. You know, you're inherently communicating just from that process that, Hey, you know, I, I, recognize what you're doing. I'm going to be sticking around for a long time. I'm not in this for a quick fix. I'm not in this to boost my own career. I mean, obviously I am, mm-hmm. but it's not what you want to portray. Mm-hmm. And I think so many, and I mean, so we have a mentorship program in the OTA and, and I was the sole coach for years. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I've, I've just talked to a lot of people one-on-one and the desire for instant gratification is just rampant, man. Like if, if, what people identify as a long time is so warped now. What do you um, What do you say to them? How do you How do you get these people? Because I mean, of course, I feel like we all deal yeah. with it too. Like, how do you get people to delay that gratification or to be like, "Hey, you've just got to sack up and be ready for the for the long game with this." There's so many different things, man, and, and it's and it's very dependent on the person. And so yeah. sometimes the person is their motives are selfish and they're not, um, they're not connected to a long-term goal. They're like, I want to get rich and not work. And so I can spend my time on the beach. And I'm like, if you don't appreciate the journey, anything is going to feel too long. And the reality is it is a long journey. I mean, yes, that there are overnight things maybe, but well, for the vast majority of people, um, you, you, you have to love the journey. Well, you, well, you know what I think it is too. I think it's that you being older, more experienced or, or, uh, having the emotional intelligence to rec- it's like, it's not, it's not even that wanting those things because you can be naive and think that those things are, you know, eventually maybe somewhere where you want to get to. But I think what it is, is what the turnoff there is th- those types of people they're just looking at the outcome and they're not, you th- those types of people are not going to the people who don't value the journey and things. They're not going to be able to critically think whenever times get hard. They're going to shut down whenever bad shit happens, right? They're not going to be able to have conviction whenever uh, whenever other people are going against them, even people that they respect as well, right? It's just like it's it's it those the qualities that come from those type of people who are looking for, hey, I'm just I'm looking to cash out and, and chill on the beach. It's 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 not even that that necessarily is a bad thing. It's just that all the other qualities and characteristics that that probably implies about that person. Hundred percent, man. I think that's 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 a hundred percent true and a brilliant thought. And also, I mean, for most of those people, that's their top priority. It's yeah. I don't give a fuck what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not passionate about my craft. I my my passion is sitting on the beach and being rich and not working. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, that's that's a generalization. Sure, um, sure. Because then what happens is if, if you're only in it for that, like you just said, there's a road bump and now you're like, fuck this. It's I'm, I'm done. I yeah. don't want to do this anymore. It's not worth it. And the reality is it's not worth it for those people. Yeah. Um, and so there's hard conversations I've had to have where I'm like, you need to be self-aware and think about why you're in this and yeah. what are your motives? You know, um, the other huge piece in my eyes that I always say is, or help people with is recognizing results that aren't tangible in order to keep them moving forward. There's a lot of things that we teach that I very much subscribe to the PTDC very much subscribes to the long game. We're, we're, we're not so much about here's how you turn around money real quickly. Here's how you get a big spike of money and then not sustain it. We're very much, here's how you build a foundation in the long term so you can run a sustainable business moving forward and not have to go back to square one every time. And unfortunately <laughs> that path doesn't produce instant tangible results a lot of time. And there's a mm. lot of times during that journey where it's just like, I feel like nothing's happening, even though you're taking forward progress, but it doesn't result in money in the bank necessarily, or I just signed six new clients, or um, I just gained a thousand new followers. And so I, I, I try to change people's perspective, or at least open their eyes to the fact that, hey, you connected with a new person today who didn't know what you were up to. And now they're following you and they're in your ecosystem and you can nurture them. Like that is the tangible step forward and a great win, you know, get as many of those as humanly possible in your network. Or, um, you, you made a process more efficient where it saves you an hour a week. Like that is a, you should recognize and celebrate 
this process win that you just had, it maybe it didn't result in something immediately. Um, and so there's a lot of different things that I, that I try to kind of throw at people. Uh, that's a different perspective to make them see like, Hey, first of all, change your expectations because it's not going to be fast and it's not going to be easy. <laughs> yeah. And then we all need wins to celebrate, of course. So let's open our eyes to what a win actually is. Yeah. I uh, know. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I know that we did, um, I absolutely want to touch on, on self-awareness as well. Um, because the, so the, the saying in your bio, which I really like is that you're passionate about amplifying self-awareness. Okay. So there's so many di different directions that I can go with this, but I wanted, but I, I think, cause I, so just so everybody knows me and Alex have conversations, like three hour conversations on zoom, just randomly, right. Just, just as friends <laughs> yeah. off air. Um, and so we've talked about some of this, but I don't think I've heard from you when, was there like a, a moment or an event or something where you were like, self-awareness is it? Like, it sounds like with some of these people you're talking about, self-awareness was kind of the missing, because they think they want that the yeah. beach life or whatever, but we all know even that shit can get old and then they're going to end up wanting something else. So it's just like, right. was there something like that that, that stands out? No, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question, man. Um, no is my immediate answer because I'm having to <laughs> think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's um, fair. No, I mean, it's, I get asked this a lot for some reason, not like, is there one specific moment, but like, what caused you to be like this? Why are you like this? Why, why do you value this stuff? What like sparked this, this passion inside of you? I have absolutely no idea, man. I mean, my best answer, I think my most honest answer is I naturally saw the value in it for myself. And I've always been naturally introspective and valued being happy with myself. And you know, I'm I'm super aware of who I am as a person. Um, too it, aware sometimes. And it, so just constantly recognizing things that I didn't like about myself to try to improve them. I saw a lot of value in that. And then just as I'm aware of that, uh, I just think a lack of self awareness and how challenging it is today in order to really get to know yourself that combination is is the root of a lot of problems i think right and but but the but this. the search the search for the awareness typically roots from you probably for, to like reduce suffering right i think with most people with and, and happiness to find yeah. happiness as well for but sure. the thing is is like it takes i think one of the biggest things with awareness and this is something uh that i think would be interesting for the future project you're talking about it's a lot of it has to do with ego as well because uh, ego Ego is this massive filter or layer that prevents you from getting to the root of real awareness. You know what I'm saying? Like, how have you dealt? Do you do? Do you? How do you deal with that? What do you mean by that? I'd be. I'd just be curious to hear. Your like on meaning, that. meaning. So for me, like I play devil's advocate in my head as much as I can, right? Like with, with there's any type of big decision or anything where I'm thinking, should I do this? Should I not do this? Like if I can't convince myself like wholehearted, like if I'm, tr I'm going to try and play hardcore devil's advocate against myself. And if I still can't, you know, convince myself that it's, it's, it's the, um, it's the wrong move, then I'm going to, I'm going to go forward with it. Right. So it's just like, I, I'm wondering if you play kind of those mental games in your head, or if you have any like mental models or anything like that, where you're just like, I need to, uh, trying to get to the actual root of yeah. the issue, man. Good I luck. Mean, Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is great, man. I think I'll probably just call it here. Um, no. <laughs> Good chat. Good chat. Yeah, Good chat. Good chat. Um, yes. I mean, so Obviously, my mind is just overflowing with thoughts right now. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I play devil's advocate in my mind all the time, all the time. Um, I think, and, and this is a step broader, I think really trying to, and I mean, you remember like this in high school and stuff, where you're like, you have to debate the other side, really believing the counterpoint to an existing thought and like trying as hard as you can to um value that and believe that as much as you are believing your current position, I think only strengthens your current position. At least that's how I see it. And so I do that internally all the time where I'm like, I have this really strong opinion about something, or I think this is objectively right. And maybe it doesn't deserve the objectiveness that I'm giving it. And so I a hundred percent do that. And I think that's great. Um, I also think, I mean, 
maybe it's ego, maybe it's a lack of self-confidence and maybe those things are the same exact thing to some degree, or at least they go hand in hand. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to know yourself. It's it, your ego absolutely gets in the way of confronting things that you have to tell yourself aren't great or aren't positive. Do you or, think, do you think some of it can come from competence? I feel like getting over ego oftentimes is, is due to a series of choices that worked in your favor based off of good judgment. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like you saw positive results. And so you're like, fuck it. I want to do that again. Or, or at least, at least I, I should put it through the same filter that mm-hmm. I did last time. And it's probably yeah. going to increase my probability of success with something else. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I think what you just said is exactly why I'm so passionate about it, because every time that I put self-awareness on the pedestal that I think it deserves, I like the outcome and I'm happier as a person. So I've, I've really quadrupled down on it in my own life, which is why I'm so passionate about helping other people kind of achieve that. And it's so deep rooted. Um, yeah. But and how do you, and how, how do you, and that's the thing is like, how, how are we, how are we going to get other people? Do you, do you (laughs) think it's more, do you think a lot of it, I'm trying to think the, the nature versus nurture debate, like, uh, have you been self-aware, like since, since you were younger or at least been pretty introspective? Cause I think that's obviously a big part of it too. I think so. I think so. I mean, my parents aren't, um, as outwardly vocal about this as I am, no one else in my family really is. Um, but obviously I, some kind of combination of my nurture allowed me to think like this, I think. And, and also, I mean, I know that's something that we talked about last time as well, but growing up in a middle-class home allowed me to have a lot of mental space to be able to think about deeper things that (laughs) a lot of other people don't think about. So I think that played a huge role from the get-go as well. Yeah. Um, But no, I mean, my parents aren't aren't really like this. And, and yeah, I, I, what I'm thinking, what I, what I just wrote down actually was just like, do you spend a lot of time? And I, I, I think that this will be interesting to people. If not, it's interesting to us. So we're going to keep riffing <laughs> on it. Um, but it's just like, do you spend a lot of time thinking or like marinating on ideas or possibly yes. this could be journaling. It could be writing. It could be just like walking around outside. Cause I think that this is something that people, especially in our industry, and and it goes both ways. Sometimes you need that hustle and grind. And sometimes you like, you just need to fucking put in the work and you just need to, cause you don't, yeah. you don't know enough. You don't have enough of a foundational of knowledge to have an intuition around certain things. Mm-hmm. So you just have to try shit. But yes. I think to really, uh, you know, you can get on that first step by just taking kind of messy action. But then after that, it's just like, then, then there's some, str- some strategy that needs to, to come along. And that requires some hardcore critical thinking without distraction, et cetera. Right. I agree. hundred percent. Um, I think all the time too much, probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I try, I, I think all the time. Is to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Got <laughs> I'm it. a classic overthinker, man. I mean, I, like I said, like I'm, I'm too aware of things. I like the ignorance is bliss conversation. I wish I was more ignorant at times. I wish I wasn't as aware as I am about everything at times. Um, cause it's draining and it's a lot of weight. And so unfortunately I, or not unfortunately, but fortunately I came to the conclusion that's just who I am. And so I have to learn to use it to my advantage and not have it fucking crush me. Uh, cause it could go either way. <laughs> I, I think, um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I think all the time and to your point of, Sometimes you need hustle. Sometimes you need to think 100% agree. I mean, I honestly think for most people, at least that I talk to, they probably need to think less and do more. Um, mm-hmm. Usually because the amount that they've thought is so far past. Like I've been thinking about making this post for a few weeks now. Oh, yeah. Like you're not going to learn anything from thinking about it. Yeah. There's only so much that you can learn right. from thinking what's going to happen. You just have to do it. Yeah. Um, and and so I think most people, at least in 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 the business development space and the fitness industry need to do more, think less. Um, but that's a huge, that's a huge uh, generalization, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Some people need to think more for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of even just like the everyday person. It's, uh, and, and I actually had a conversation with uh, Ryan Doris uh, about this mm. and he was talking about how, um, how, how thinking like we're talking about for, for a lot of people is absolutely a luxury. 
right? Because most people, a lot of people, most of America is simply trying to figure out, you know, where's dinner coming from, taking care of the kids, taking care of the bills, taking care of all these things. So it's just like, I know it can be fun to sit here and, and riff uh, about these things because we, we do have that luxury. But, uh, I think that, I think that also on the same side, it's like, I think a really good way of getting out of that constant cycle is take making some time to to take a step back and really audit your day and figure out some time to to think and be like think bigger right and try and figure out okay how can I stop this shit or, or stop with the biggest bottleneck uh, or the biggest problem and then kind of go down the list from there maybe for sure for sure and I mean this is why I think awareness is so important because I mean, first and foremost, I a hundred percent agree with that thought. I used to judge people a little bit for how are you not thinking about empathy? How are you not thinking about self-awareness? How are you not thinking about, um, this, this open mindedness? Why aren't you, you know, and you, and one to two years ago, maybe I, I was having a chat with a friend and he completely opened my eyes to that perspective of like, I mean, exactly what you just said. It's a luxury to be able to think like that every single person only has a certain amount of mental space that they can dedicate to living in general. And if you have to think about where food's coming from, or you have to think about, um, you know, or, or if you have a family and you work two jobs and um, you're a single parent or whatever it may be, I mean, there's, you go back to the hierarchy of needs, thinking about how to uh, be empathetic and amplify your self-awareness and grow as an individual is going to be fucking low on that list. If you're trying to eat, right. And if you're trying to not wake up stress every single day, and if you have high blood pressure and you know, so many different things. And so I think it's a hundred percent a privilege, um, to be able to think about that. But also to your point on the other side of things, I think if you carve out two minutes to sit and think for yourself, I think most everyone can do that. Um, and you can take a small step forward in this without completely changing your life or without having it be a big deal at all. Um, and just sit for a couple of minutes and then think, yeah, what's one step that I can take today? That's often, I find myself asking that question to myself and to my students all the time. Yes, you want to have a vision, you want to have angle, but let's just not think about that for right now because that's more overwhelming. That's daunting. That's going to add to the stress a lot of times. Let's only think about one step that we can take at this very point in time and let's block everything else out. Once we take that step, let's celebrate, feel happy with yourself that you did that, that you took a step forward. And let's focus on the next step. Yeah. And positive reinforcement and then positive reinforcement and also just masking the you know, back to fitness, I lost 10 pounds and my goal was 80. Right. Okay. Well, you know, let's not even think about the 80 at this point. It's great to have that end goal. Let's keep that there. But a perspective I find is really helpful for a lot of people is like, just fuck that right now. Just yeah. focus on what's directly in front of you, that stepping stone that's right there. How can you take that leap? Um, and the thing is, when you teach those principles up front, it's harder and maybe slower at, at first to get going but then you're really going because the lessons and the things that you learn within yourself to take those first five steps is going to fuel you for the next 50. Yes. Yeah. And you know what, what what is also interesting about you? I remember, I just remembered that you mentioned this in our chat because someone being (laughs) (laughs) interested, right? Being it, well, listen, my memory is dog shit. Shout out to marijuana. Um, so with with you, you said that you don't read much, right? Like, or you mm. don't, you don't, uh, you don't like, I think that yeah. was correct, right? You don't read much. And somebody that's as correct. articulate and as introspective as you, because that's what I was about to say is like, I'm thinking of, I think there's a good balance of analyzing your own thoughts, but then also I get a lot of new thoughts or new ways of pathways of thinking about things from other sure. people's ideas. So how, like, how, how do you do that? <laughs> I do too. I mean, I, so you're right. I don't read that much. First of all, I'm a slow ass reader and, and these are all excuses, but I'm going to make them. Yeah, but that's why I don't enjoy it. You know, it takes me so long to read a book in my eyes. I also think I have ADHD and I, I really struggle with focus at times where I'm like, yeah, so I've just never become a really avid reader. I do enjoy reading, but I think I told you like, I can, I can read a one page like summary of a book, like give me the high level thoughts and then let, let me take it from there and let me analyze them. And maybe I'll go to find a certain post of theirs or something like that. But 
I'm a big, I'm a big observational guy, man. I, that's where I get a lot of my learning from with other people. I like to surround myself with people that I look up to. I think that are interesting, that don't agree with me in a lot of things that live differently than me. Um, I watch a lot of people. I mean, this is the reason I love podcasts and stuff like that is when I listen to your podcast, I think it's amazing that I get to be a fly on the wall in these conversations, because if you sit and think there's a lot that you can take away from just listening to someone's story. Um, and Lit and looking at nonverbal cues and verbal cues of like, how did they feel in that situation? Okay. They obviously got uncomfortable there. How did, did they show it? No. Okay. So then they had to overcome this, this discomfort there. And so then I'll think to myself, something I should probably work on is not showing when I'm uncomfortable and how can I do that? And so my mind goes through these, these processes, um, You're when I just watch other people live. You're, you're kind of reading between the lines, which is interesting 100%. because this is something that I told, uh, oh, I had Sam Forget on my podcast yesterday or mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. And um, he was he was about to have a podcast with somebody else. And I was talking about how I think about podcasting and the questions that I'm going to ask people is usually like I, I tell them that I go and read through like Instagram captions and I don't read literally yeah. what they say, but instead I'll say, I'll maybe look at why they phrase things certain ways or why they decide to have these certain pictures and then from this angle and why they have this highlight on their story or why they put it this way, right? I think it's seen between the line. That's whenever you can really point things out that maybe people are consciously or subconsciously aware of. But I think that that's whenever you can, like if you have that, because what you have is a superpower, right? It's emotional intelligence, right? It's It's being able to see like even listen to what people say but then also you can you can read between the lines and, and really understand what they mean as opposed to just the literal things they're saying right right 100 percent, 100 percent. and i mean my my hyper awareness just as a person helps with this as well and makes this a favorable way to learn for me and i mean i do read like i i read sure. words it's just reading books has I, I've never, it's never been something that's been a regular part of my life, but I certainly will read from smart people. Um, what about you know? movies? Movies. I like, I, I hardly watch them. Okay. Right. I've watched like no movies, man. All right. Hmm. I'm definitely the person to now horror movies. Yes. I'm obsessed. Well, why? <laughs> why? That's the worst type. Because <laughs> they're fucked up. And I'm fucked up. <laughs> okay. All right. See, there's some reading between the lines right there <laughs> into, into Alex's subconscious. I used to have on my dating profile, like, you know, I could watch a horror movie like at night by myself during a weekday or whatever. But then I've, fa I've learned that people th thought that I was actually fucked up. And so I was like, oh, okay, okay, too far. <laughs> well, I'll just say I love horror movies like a normal person and, and, not, and go from there. <laughs> not, not the best copywriting for uh, Tinder. <laughs> Absolutely not the best copywriting. No, for Tinder, maybe. Because yeah, actually, true. that can sell there, though. For Hinge, though, I don't, no, absolutely not. <laughs> we need to get into the si different psychology of different dating apps. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, that the podcast number two with the uh, psychology of dating apps. That actually, that actually sounds super interesting. Which... It does. Speaking of, which we can go ahead and get into, I did. I want to go on to a second topic here, which was sure. um, based off of my uh, um, somewhat controversial. Is it controversial? Controversial? I would say but I think versial could be controversial. Yeah, I'm fancy, but I always say versial. It's yeah. controversial. All right, that word. Um, my post about is the internet net positive or net negative. And just so everyone knows, whenever I say internet, I don't just mean social media. I mean all of the internet, anything that has to do with Wi-Fi connection, et cetera, which is lots of things. And well, I want to hear your thoughts first, because I, I know you pose this question. I want to hear why, what, what made you think of it? Why did you pose this question? And then I want to hear just your thoughts around it. I, I don't remember exactly why I post. I think it was just, I think I saw, I, I probably saw somebody's piece of content around it on why it's like, why they think that it's, it's a good thing or a bad thing or, or whatever. But right. I just, I, I think that I'm also very biased because of my career and because of everything that I do. And because there's so much good that has uh, manifested itself in my life through mm. the internet. So obviously I'm going to have a biased perspective. But I just I, I think that too many people think of the the uh, the the eco 
echo chambers of social media and just seeing mm. negativity and things like that. And I sure. think that that is hyper aware in their minds and that's kind of top of mind. And you just, it's, it's, and I think that our, what is it? The, the actual psychology behind it. We just tend to focus on negative things more so than the positive, right? We can get seven, right. compl seven compliments and one negative thing said about it, one insult. And we're going to focus on that one insult as opposed to the yeah. seven compliments. Right. Uh, yeah. so I think that whenever people inherently think about that, they think that it's bad. Um, but also I think that, which was interesting because I was talking, I was at the football game, the college football game this weekend, UK's game. And uh, one of my best friend's mom was there. And then also her like 15 year old daughter or 16 year old daughter or something like that, okay. right? Different generations. And we were going back and forth about this. And I think, and she was just talking about how it's going to be bad for the kids and all these different things. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, here's the thing though. I think it's just because we don't know what the future looks like for these children with these devices. Like, of course, don't get me wrong. I, I think absolutely there needs to be some type of moderating system involved. Like there has to, just with anything, right? You're, 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 you, it's your responsibility to make sure that you, you can, um, control yes. your time on these apps and things like that. And I know right. they make it very difficult. However, there's lots of difficult things in life that you have to deal with as well. So it's just like, I think that she, the, the adult was very scared of what the future is going to look like for these children because of the internet. But I was like, here's the thing that here's the thing though, is like all of her friends, everybody else that she's going to be around they're the majority of the, the younger kids, the younger generation is going to be using the internet. And if they don't mm. use the internet to their advantage, like people who choose not to use it to their advantage, a lot of people, this of course this is a generalization, but it's just like, sure. you're going to be left behind. You're there, it, the, It's not going to slow down. I can guarantee that. The internet is definitely not going to slow down. So I think that because of our upbringing and what the adult kept saying, and I'll, I'll turn this over to you in a second, what the adult kept saying um, was she was just like, we know how to, we know what it, life is like on the other side, right? With mm -hmm. that, like pre-internet, pre-text, mm -hmm. pre-phone, all these yes. different things. And I'm just like, okay, that's, that's fine. But also like the younger generation, they don't, they don't need to know about necessarily about those things because it's just, I think that it's just different. I think it's different and because it's different and because it's unknown and because it's just scary with technology and things, uh, I think that it can be very worrisome. And I think that that can give people a very skewed objective in the, in the sense that, uh, this is, we've, we grew up without it. We turned out fine. So there's sure. no really need for it. Right. So I don't know. It is it is tricky, and obviously it's gonna be it's gonna be subjective. But yeah, I'm I'm curious what you you think with it. I mean, it was it was a great question, man. And so I, again, my mind is just over fucking flowing right <laughs> yeah. now with so many thoughts. I think I I agree with you and the mom and yeah. in certain instances because it's a hundred percent up to the individual to create the boundaries where, and I'm thinking mainly of social media when sure. I say this, but to create the boundaries where it doesn't really fuck you up. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if you're not intentional about it and especially in a developing brain and a young child and whatever it may be, if, because the companies, they're not going to help. In fact, they're going to, their mission is to do the opposite. That's they true. want you to use it as much as humanly possible. And so there has to be intention within the individual. Um, yeah. And I think for most people, there isn't. So I think for, to the mom's point, worry is valid to some degree. I do think, I, and I'm not going to cut you off much. I, no, all no, I'm please. saying is that I do think that there needs, I, I don't think that for young, young kids, I don't know what the age is where they should be introduced to the internet, sure. but I think like a 10 year old having a social media or something probably is not the best thing. Even, even a 14 year old. Right. I mean, it's, it's, I'm fine with it, but I think, I mean, even a 25 year old, honestly, any human, I think this, but as, as you're learning and and you're developing as a person and stuff. I think the develop part is is key because they don't know yeah. what they don't know or they don't know, like they can't, right. they don't have the tools that a 25 year old has gone, you know, most 25 sure. year olds have as like a 15 year old or 14 year old. Well, and, and the younger generations, they grew up in a world in, in the internet world. And I think synonymous with the internet world is the world where external validation is super strong. And we care about what other people think like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I think 
if you are 11 years old or you're 15 years old and your entire life has been the social media era, um, which is fueled by all that shit. Yeah. I do think that's dangerous. And if, if not, not dangerous, but well, comparison, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I wish I would have asked this. And I, I mean, I know her, she's, she's a very good friend. Um, cause it's my best friend's mom, but I I wish I could have asked her. Oh, (laughs) I want to know what the comparison was like when, like pre-internet because you see what I'm like I think right, with social media right. it makes comparison hyper available and because you can compare yourself to everybody instantly at any stage of life or any in all over the world right the access to the life that you could have through right. social media can can really fuck you up right well, think about the feedback that we get via social media you post a picture and we have these parameters in our mind that's yeah. like my posts normally get 20 likes it's only got eight likes people think i'm a piece of shit yeah, like yeah. that's the process or people must hate yeah. this thing yeah or whatever it's like you buy a new jacket and back to the pre-social media days and you walk through school and everyone you walk by is like shit love it bad hate yeah. it you look fat you, you know yeah. all these things that are just like I don't think our brains are used to getting this amount of feedback this quickly. And then we put so much weight on each individual piece of it. Mm. And I think there's a lot of pieces of it. And that's what scares me. And Mm. that's why I like to limit my time is because I care about what other people think about me. Um, Yeah. I get, I get a negative comment and it has an impact on me. I don't want it to, and it shouldn't. And I think a lot of negative a lot of negativity in general is is definitely more from within the person than whoever the negativity is projected towards. Um, do you do, do I, those do those hurt you more? Uh, or, or I mean, not saying like just con- related to comments, yeah. but I'm saying if you because here's what what I've found to to be vulnerable is like whenever I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause there's, there's waves within being a fitness coach, right? You can have waves sure. of, of getting more clients, losing clients, uh, maybe. And so what I'm saying is you can have a down wave of maybe, maybe I lost a bunch of clients. I'm not getting more clients right now. Maybe, um, the content that I'm putting out that I'm so desperately hoping hits really well so that I can right. get more clients again. I'm in a more sensitive state to the negativity, right? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's just like, I, I think that that is another part where people can have something shitty going on in their life. And then also they're just looking for any type of validation whatsoever. Yes. And so what better way to do that than maybe posting something, posting your new outfit on social media, right? Or posting this new thing that you went to and it, it doesn't stack up to where you thought it was, right? It doesn't reach and that bar every time it's you post. All, it's all lies anyway. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's like, it's all the story we tell ourselves. That's all fucking made up regardless. Yeah. But I a hundred percent agree with you. I mean, you're vulnerable. You, you need something external, which is of course that's normal, but then you go to social media, what an awful place or potentially great place, but it's just out of your control. And that's what I don't like yes. is you're going to some place that you are putting your control, your happiness, your confidence, whatever it may be in the hands of other people who are not thinking about it like you are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, everyone's thinking about it like that for themselves. No, I shouldn't say everybody. Right. Um, Cause most probably aren't, but I mean, that's, that's where I see a lot of the problem. And if, if your question was around is social media net positive or net negative, I would say net negative personally. You think so? I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot because let's think about the positives for a sec. Yeah. What are the positives that you see in your eyes? I mean, you're able to connect with people that you're you're not usually able to connect with. Well, well I go to um, I go to business. I go to marketing. Um, sure, I think I think sure. of, I think of a free platform that allows me to advertise my services that can allow me to have a living and and all these different things. And of course, I guess that's not the only. You know, if social media wasn't here tomorrow, there are other avenues right. that could exist. But I think for the for the most part, it's one of the easiest and and most accessible to everybody. Um, right. I, I think that, and then, and then the other big one that pops out of my mind is yeah. Connecting with people from around the world, family members, people in the military, whatever it is, just, just being able to talk with people who you may not be able to keep tabs on, uh, or whatever you can loosely keep tabs on them. Um, so yeah, that's, that's some of the, some of the major ones. Yeah, for sure. Which I think is great. I mean, yeah. I think that's a huge positive. I think that helps people. Mm-hmm. I think if social media didn't exist, what you just said about social media would be the case with another avenue. 
from a business perspective. Yeah. You know, it's an easy, low cost, low barrier way to reach a lot of people where a lot of people use it every day. I think other app that would happen with, with other things. Um, I low key the other day, whenever, sorry to cut you off the the other day when Facebook and Instagram went down (laughs) a very, a very, a very small part of me, maybe even bigger than I would like to admit, like was really hoping like, fuck it, dude. I wish it was just gone. Like I wish I just, I wish it was gone. Uh, I just really think that it would be so interesting because then it's just, then it's a level playing field for everybody. Well, at least, you know, for the most part for some people. Right. But I just think it's, I just think it's funny. I just think it's, it's just so chaotic and the chaos that it all created was just so telling of the the current times. It was, it was wild. It was wild. It was, it was wild. It was super eye opening for me because it, it totally showed me how often I will pull out my phone and open Facebook or Instagram <laughs> yeah. for no fucking reason. Yeah. Other than that I'm bored and I can't just, focus. Just to see couldn't refresh feed or whatever the hell it said. <laughs> like the error kept popping up. I'm like, I'm an idiot. I, I did it again. I was gonna say, you know what's fucked though is I would I would pick up my phone and it was down for however many hours. I were two hours in and I'd still check it. Yeah. Because the habit was that strong, even though I knew it was not gonna be up. Yeah. I mean, and I was like, damn, man. This is so ingrained. It really um, is. And I think if we just isolate that from an individual perspective, I think that almost outweighs from a net po- net positive, net negative. Um, and then we go into all the stuff that we just talked about with what it does to a developing brain, what it does to people psychologically, what we put values on, um, yeah. what we strive towards, how we compare ourselves. Because you tell a false story on social media as the poster a lot of times, yeah. or at least it's a, it's not false, but it's a shape it's a story. Highlight reel. Yeah. It's a highlight reel. It's either a highlight reel or it's just very, it's very curated. It's, oh, this yeah. is how I want it to come across regardless of reality. And then that's what everyone else. And that's what Ooh. everyone does. Ooh. And so that's harmful. I think. Yeah. I, you know what? I am somewhat slowly changing my stance, but there <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking it through. It, it it would take it would definitely take some time. But what you just said was one of the things that I had written down here about one of your posts on limiting social media time. Mm. Uh, you said, you, it, and quote, uh, and it's made me realize that as much as I love all the positive social media brings to the table, sometimes taking a small step back can give you clarity on how you want to progress your life because it often forces you to ignore how you think other people want you to progress it. I think that, I think that that in the sense of thinking about how other people think that I should be living that kind of perspective on myself, but then also seeing how other people live and that influencing my decisions on a regular basis as well. So yeah, definitely talk about that. Cause I think that's super interesting. hundred percent. And the way other people live isn't even true. I mean, so that's, that's, so yeah, I mean, uh, you're seeing the curated version. You're seeing the curated version. And that's just the reality because of what the values we place. We want as many likes as possible. Think about that though, just to hammer my point and even further in. And um, now I want to change your mind. It's not usually my goal, but <laughs> now that you said you're close, I'm like, let's just push them over the fucking edge here. <laughs> Perfect. But think about the, that's true with how you live your life and how you progress your life. I think that same exact thing applies to people's self-worth. And yeah. how they think about themselves. And I mean, that's where I think there's a huge, why I think it's net negative over net positive, even though there's a ton of positives. And I mean, my mind could totally be changed on this because I don't have all the perspectives that uh, I could have. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying in my head to go through <laughs> all the things. Like one of the things that came up was I was like, I, I'm very... Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm very aware of all the things going on in the world or like culture, the way things are moving. The, like you have a pulse yeah. on culture yeah. because of social media, because of, you know, it's just like, that's just, just kind of, like, it was so funny whenever Facebook and Instagram goes down, you go to Twitter, right? And then everybody's, <laughs> right. and then everybody's on, tr- everybody's on Twitter though. And then you all, you're all in on this inside joke kind of, right? The whole world, like Twitter, Twitter tweeted, they were like, hello, everyone you know it's just <laughs> exactly. like it's so funny because exactly. it's just, it's just I, I think that that but it's like that's that doesn't bring like if i didn't have that would my life be that much terrible like much more terrible like no i don't i don't think i it's not something that i think i need i think it's cool because you kind of feel you know a part of something or whatever it's just like if sure. somebody listening to this was like oh tw- you know 
Facebook and Instagram went down the other day, right? Most people are going to know what we're talking about, but the people who shocked, don't, yeah. the people who don't, right? They're not in on the inside joke or, or or whatever. They're not up to date on current news. But I'm also like, well, I don't know most of what's going on with like you know government or like politics and things. Like I I really don't like I don't I sure. don't pay much attention to it. And so it's just like and and my life is definitely better because of that because of all and, and and honestly social media could have been a big culprit of it damn it alex i don't know i'm just i'm going <laughs> i'm going in my head i'm tr- i want to believe that it is net positive ah uh, it's just it really is tough the self the, the self worth the self worth thing is big you think it could yeah. be i think it could be net positive i'm completely open to it being net positive i just don't think it is right now um but i want to change my mind i want i want it to be well, do you, but, what, what do you think about what do you think about because of everything that we're talking about of limiting social media and things we've seen over over the past years, Apple comes out with, you, you know, showing mm-hmm. your times, giving you limits. You can set all these self-restraints. I feel like the market is asking for those things, yeah. but you think it's not going to it's still it still requires some form of self uh, monitoring, oh, which, is, which is which is which is. That's the bottleneck. It's smart for it's smart for those companies, of course. I mean, I've been doing a ridiculous amount of market research and customer research this year, and and they understand what putting out services and tools and products like that will do, and they are able to leverage those, and they do it really, really well. Has it changed anything on a grand scale? I don't think so. Has it changed anything for myself personally? Not really. Do you, Has it do, you, do, you do you use them? The time thing, the 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 self limiting timers. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah, you don't. And I, I do too. And, and I just turn I them off. them every day, <laughs> <laughs> every single day, dude. I literally say ignore for the day. So God damn it, we I suck. F- because what I know, <laughs> see, this is what fucking happens, dude. Because, and I'm just thinking about this out loud now. So, so part of me, if it's uh, a bit scattered, but it's fine. I mean, yes, the companies are doing that. They're able to go back to investors to they seem to be going to like congress a lot these days or whoever they're going to and say we have these because we have a mission to help other people use our products more responsibly personally and i'm just a cynic in general because i think i almost think it's healthy and that could be interesting to talk about but um there why would that be their mission their core mission i mean i can see it getting to a point where it's so bad that they have to do that. But while that little piece is running, in my eyes, the other 2 billion pieces that are making their platforms more usable, mm. more addictive, those other, are also running. Sure. <laughs> other direction, knocked out my charger. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, the, so yes, right. The, uh, there's a very small percentage of the company. What I'm thinking of more so is actually uh, um, like third party apps or th- so like mm. freedom, right. I think is, sure. is one of the apps sure. that you can go to block certain websites and things like, yeah. but, but it's just like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, I'm thinking of those types of other comp- third party companies that are going to come in and be like, hey, there's, do you think somebody, cause if somebody cracks it and legit makes it, I don't know how you can do it. Right. Like I just think about the, I think of the, the jars that people use with, for, uh, um, for food where you put in like yeah. cookies and then you can like <laughs> lock it. Literally, there's nothing you can do except smashing the box for right. like two hours or whatever. It's like, I'm, I'm trying to think of being able to do that with your phone or your laptop. And it's just like, I don't see that being, I don't see that sticking. <laughs> it will, it will, ha- I don't either. It will yeah. happen. Yeah. There's people who post about, you know, you see there's pictures about, Hey, I have no social media feed, but they're posting that to Facebook for other people to appreciate. You know, there's, there's certainly timing lock things and stuff like that, but then you look at social media usage and it only goes up and you look at numbers and you look at the worth of companies and you, you look at all the things that matter at a grand scale for gauging whether people are using social media less or not. And I don't, it doesn't really make a difference. So we are. So now it can make a difference for an individual for sure, hundred percent. And I think those third-party apps will always have a place because as individuals go through their own cycle of, holy shit, I need to stop using social media so much, whatever reason that may be, then those individuals will use those tools and then they'll cycle off them most likely because 
the positive that each individual gets. I mean, it's like a drug. Mm -hmm. They're like, I, I want this. I need this right now. Um, maybe people who are good about it will, and I put that in quotes, if you're going to watch the <laughs> yeah, video, yeah. good about it, will do that thing. We'll go to the third party app and say, I mean, I felt great when I put the timer on Instagram yeah. and Facebook yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. But it changed nothing for me. I mean, if anything, it was it's worse now because I feel like shit. Now when I, I say ignore. <laughs> now, now I'm just more self aware of how shitty I actually am exactly. at breaking my own promises to myself. You're right. Damn it. It's, so even that is a mad negative, man. <laughs> I don't shit. think it is, but uh, but yeah. Well, I mean, is, what do you? Is there anything that you have found that's successful? I mean being aware of all this shit and <laughs> not putting so much weight on whether I get 150 likes or 13 likes. I mean, it's, it's internal work. It's, it's, uh, I also think you have to have more, important, you have to have more important shit to worry about. Right. It's just like, if you're, For if, sure. if you're, if you're working or something like that, it's like, I know I need to do this or else I'm not eating next month as you an have example. To have other, Oh, a hundred percent. Right. You have to have other passions. You have to have other purpose. You have to have other meaning, um, which I think is just hard to do. And and kind of going back to the, the the younger kids using social media, I mean, that I think we place that meaning on younger kids at a very early age. And it's it is really satisfying. And I think it's really hard to to come out of that. Mm. Um, and it's also and it's positive for a lot of people. I mean, there's influencers and shit, but a lot of them, you when you when you speak to them personally, they're not that happy. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. Well, what's interesting is with the kids is that they are like the the what do you want to be when you grow up? Most of them, right. a lot of them are like influent. Like I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a TikToker. I want to be these certain Which things. I, I think that's cool personally. I mean, I, I do think, think cool, it's cool. I think it's cool. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Going back and forth real quick. And I want to be respectful of your time going back. Like, I think it's cool because these, this is a cool, a cool way to promote self-autonomy and like doing something for yourself, right? So they're just like starting your own business or, or whatever, promoting yourself. Yes. I think yes. That's that side of it and the the sovereignty of and just like doing your own thing, Not I think is in a box, you know, personal expression, right? That's really big as far as being different. I think that's cool that it, you don't, there's so many, there's different avenues as opposed to doctor, lawyer, et cetera, sure. right? There, yes. There's other things you can do. I think that that is very exciting, but also the likelihood, the ratio of kids that are actually going to make it versus probably going to have a net negative effect on their self-worth as yeah. a person. Because that's what's, well, I mean, here's the thing though. Sports do something similar, right? But but you're also not playing baseball 16 hours a day like you can with social media. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. And and the feedback you get in professional sports on the journey, sure, you'll you'll get a lot of negative feedback. You get a lot of people telling you you ain't shit. You you know you're not right. gonna make it. But it's it it strikes me as different because that's still within the realm of true. I mean, I guess you could post a video and people will say you're a fucking idiot or whatever. Sure. But it's I wonder if our brains rationalize like you're not good at this sport versus like you're a shit human. And I think people who are really into sports, they probably, they probably think those are similar in their own mind. I know I've totally gone through mm. that where someone's like, this thing that you did is negative. And I take that as I am negative as a person. And like that distinction, I think is really important for I people think to understand. Sports, but. sports is easier to, to distinct in our mind as a skill as a game, yes. as opposed to social media, which this is, is just us as a us. person. Yeah. Right. And if you don't like me, that means if, if you don't like it, it means you're not accepting me. Mm -hmm. And if you're not accepting me, then how the fuck can I accept me? Yeah. And the reality is a lot of people aren't going to accept you in quotes on social media. Again, what the fuck does that even mean? What metric are we using for acceptance? you got lower amount of engagement than you normally get on a post. I mean, it's just, oh, it's just so, which there's so many other things that are going to dictate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just can't, I just can't help but think that it's, because I also think, man, I strongly believe that the positives of social media, our evolutionary brains and our ways, we will find those things in other avenues a place for community, yeah. a place to feel heard, a place to keep in touch with people. I think that would happen. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know how that could happen and like, because then it would be slowly on the path to social media basically. But 
it, for the sake of the argument, I think it could totally happen. Well, so wouldn't, wouldn't it be, would it positives. be would it just, I'm sorry, would it be just like uh -huh. blogs and things back in the day, like blogs, sure. forums, websites? Yeah, yeah. Patreon. And business, you can do, you know, Thumbtack and whatever else. Like those would be super popular and those would be the top priority now for business owners. And a lot of the algorithm and the, the strategy and stuff would be dissecting that platform as opposed to Facebook ads or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I think we would we would still achieve those things because as humans, we I just think that's what we would naturally evolve into. Um, but I also think potentially we could do those things without such the strong negative effects of social. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could get the upside without all the downside. Potentially. All, not, be not, downside. not all of it. Yeah. There would still be some downsides. Possibly right. downsides that we don't even think of, but I think also with social media, I mean, I, yeah, it's probably going to be hard to beat the downsides of social media, to be honest. I think so. But now thinking about the internet as a whole, I don't know if you have a hard stop at all. I'm, I'm happy to go a little bit uh, longer. Uh, well, what were you about to say? Finish your thought. What are you thinking? <laughs> I was going to say back to the, is the internet net positive, net negative? Because mm. I, I go on the net positive end for the internet in general yeah. beyond social media. But I think there is a net negative with social media definitely contributes to, um, well, let's start with the positive though, at least from my perspective, and I would love to hear yours. I mean, positives in the sense of like, Think of the advancements that we've made. Think about what we're able to access. We're That's, able to get healthcare online. We're able to develop, you know, like your blood sugar monitoring technology so people with, with diabetes can, I mean, not even just health developments, but just all the advancements and, and accessibility. You know, we have GPS, we have, I mean, the list goes yeah, on I and think, on and on. I think with medicine, with medicine and just like everyday living, like everyday, like way of life, like way of living, how easy and convenient our lives are now compared yeah. to what they used to be. I think it's, I well, medicine alone, I think is such a huge net positive. Like it's just, it's so For hard sure. to, you know, as far as, because certain things are going to weigh more than others on the net positive scale. And it's just yeah. like medicine advancements. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking huge. You know, that's, it's, it's that's a tough one to beat. It's a tough one to beat. Um, and, and I know there's there's an argument around, well, medicine is is really developed from a money perspective. And you know, we could treat it in other ways. That's that's less, you know. Sure. So I can I can see that, but I, but even with that, and not even really knowing much about that industry, mm -hmm. admittedly. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I think it's net positive hundred percent. Yeah. Where do you see, I mean, social media aside, because I, I in my head, and this is kind of a deeper negative, but I think it's true. Where do you see the negatives aside from kind of like social media shit that we talked about, like people have low self-worth and stuff with the internet, with the internet in general. Like if you had to argue it's a net negative, what would you say? Um, maybe like if my mind first goes to like hacking and shit, like security mm. type stuff, like people getting yeah. into people's documents or stealing credit cards or, or whatever, just sta like data, data type stuff is interesting that I don't yeah. know a lot about, yeah. like as far as taking people's data um, and, and doing that with what you will. You know, it's like, I think that those are those are kind of the first things. I think the conversation around privacy is very interesting. Mm. Um, it depends on where you stand. For me personally, it's like, I, here's the thing, I don't think I have anything to hide. You know what I'm saying? Like for, <laughs> right. somebody, for somebody who puts out most things, it's like, I don't, you know, of course, if there's like the, the camera shit where they're always looking at your camera, like that would be obviously a problem, you know? Um, <laughs> right. But but like with data and stuff, like if people know like my whatever, like my spending habits or something or like what I buy on Amazon, it's like, I'm cool with that because they just offer cooler shit to me, right? <laughs> you, know? Right, right. you know, it's just like, that's fine. At least, cause at least I'm going to have advertisements. It's going to be around things that I potentially want, you know, right. um, as opposed to just random shit throwing at me. Uh, it's like, oh, they listened to me as I was having a conversation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind it. <laughs> dude, dude, I thought of something the other day. I didn't say anything about it. I didn't, I swear I didn't look it up. I didn't do anything. I literally just thought about it and it popped up on my feed and dude, I'm like, yeah. this is, this is either just a really weird coincidence uh, and, and you know, nah. it was, it was a carousel thing. So I was like, maybe it's just, you know, maybe that's fine, but maybe they're just spitballing. They're like, these seem like you, one of these could hit home for you. Oh. Nah, dude, I don't think it's coincidence. I don't know, man. It's weird. It's weird. I'm chipped up. I'm, I, 
I'll say it right now. I got vaxxed. That's what it is. I got vaxxed and now I've got the chip in me and they know my, oh. okay. <laughs> they know all the shit about me. That's Dude, it. I got vaxxed as well. I mean, I, I, I hope they put the chip in me. I'm all for that. Yeah. Like <laughs> personally, I care very little about being tracked about privacy because right. I think it's gone. It's gone anyway. And I, and I just think worrying about that is, I mean, what do I have to hide? Like it's, it's a, sure, boom, it's, a boomer, it's a boomer, it's a boomer thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. To worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I do think it's a problem. I mean, the hacking thing for sure. But I don't know, man. I don't log those as huge negatives for some reason. Yeah. And maybe it's just lack of lack of visibility on that's, them and not really knowing anything about it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I mean, what do you think? I think a huge, huge negative and why I almost answered net negative to your poll for the internet in general. Okay. And this is a deep thought, man. So bear with me because I haven't really verbalized this too much. Okay. But I think it's multiple things. So I think confirmation bias is strong just in the world today. I think the internet, going back to the tracking, the ads, it, it, again, if you're not intentional about it, it pushes you deeper into your own belief system and it surrounds you with other things that can take any belief that you have and form a world around you where that is objective truth. Hmm. And it puts other people around you who think the same thing. And I think that is the foundation of a lot that is fucked up in the country right now. And just in general, not, e- not even political shit at all. Just that line of thinking well, and that process, I think is very harmful. Well, here's, here's anybody. what, here's what my mind instantly, cause I, I agree with you. And I think in a sense that with the internet, it's obviously amplified because you can connect with more people as opposed to your local community. But in the sense of me growing up in Kentucky for 25 years and then moving to New York City last year and seeing the different ways of life and the different ways of living and just the different worldview that I had after living there for even just a year, it just made it just, you know, as far as being open minded and just realizing, hey, the way that you live life or the way that you see things or the way that things you think are supposed to be a certain way, mm. it's just like it's so wrong. Right. And that's just even moving to yeah. New York. I couldn't imagine moving to a different country or right or all right. these different things where it's just it's even amplified even more. So what I'm saying is what your the problem that you're the confirmation bias and things is just like a lot of people around these parts in Kentucky think similarly. <laughs> right. And so sure. it could take moving away or, or doing something. It's just like, and, and I, but I think, and the reason why I think the internet can be good with that is because that gives the people who are in rural Kentucky, who can't go anywhere because of poverty, because of food insecurity, because of just a lot of shitty things with sure. the luck of their draw and how they live life. They can have the internet to see the world in different places. Like I have, I have family members uh, who, you know, they have never been to a beach, right? They've never yeah, been, for sure. they've never been to these certain areas and the way that they figure those things or can even have the opportunity to change their mind outside of the people who are within the proxim- proximity of them is yeah. through the internet. Whether they do that sure. or not, that's up to them, but at least the opportunity is there. For sure. For sure. And that's a great point. And that's a really good point. I would argue that the internet does not help people metaphorically move out of their hometown. If anything, it pushes them further into it. So Uh, I think you have uh, the opportunity to do it. Okay. I see. I think how the internet works and how the goal of a lot of internet companies to make you use Mm. and help you is going to be the opposite. They're going to push you into your further beliefs. And what I think it, where the, the core of the problem is, is that, but it's also then how we view other people who don't agree with us. I think that is simultaneously happening where we view people um, much more negatively who have this other opinion than us because we live in a world now where our opinion is so objectively right and it's morally right and we're standing for what we believe in. But that's what everyone thinks with the plethora of opinions that are out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're all alike. We all want very similar things. It's right. just how we get there varies. So, but now back back to your point, if you go outside in Kentucky, I think you have a much higher chance of coming in contact with someone who has a differing of opinion on a minor thing, maybe not like a whole worldview potentially, but sure. maybe, sure. and having a pleasant interaction with that person than you would on social media. I think there's a higher chance mm. of that happening in person mm. because the other thing is, man, and this all goes hand in hand. That's true. 
what's legitimate now and what's not, those lines are gone. I mean, what's a legitimate source of information? What's a legitimate mm. fact? What's not? What's an opinion? What is a legitimate, um, what's an expert? What's not? I mean, there's so many conversations now. We've rooted so many conversations down to like, this source isn't believable. And then you have these other independent sources that come up and can look just the same as a legitimate source or not legitimate source. And it's hard to understand if you're just living your life. Yeah. And I think that can push you even deeper into this place where you're like, anyone who doesn't think like this is whatever, is an idiot, doesn't have morals, doesn't understand the world because all I see is this information. And so how can I be wrong? Everyone I talk to, all the comments I see, everybody is like this. And I just think, and this is just my human psychology, human behavior mind at, at work here, but I think the problems that that can, or like the problems that can stem from that are bigger than we realize and plays more of a role than we realize. Um, and I mean, I'm talking, yes, on a grand scale, but also an individual scale. And I mean, I've seen it in myself even where like people are painted, it's easy to paint people as villains now or like bad people and we put them into boxes and I, it's it's gotten to a point. And now this obviously isn't all the internet's fault. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but I think it plays a huge role. I really do. And so yeah. when yeah. I think about that, which I think about it a lot, that's where I'm like, I, I, I believe, and I know not everyone will agree with me, but that that is a massive problem. Um, so that that was my only counter thought internally where I'm like, and then the social media thing too, but like, could it be net negative because of that? I don't think so. Sure. But, I, but it's a huge problem. I ask. Right. Hmm. You've given me a lot to think about. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do still. I, I firmly think that it is still net positive because I, I think what you're saying it's definitely, um, it's definitely valid. Like, and I think it's definitely possible. I think it would, there's some, there's some deeper roots in there that we would have to uncover. And also I feel like we would need some different people in different areas to help us kind of sure in areas that we don't know, you know, that's what I'm 100%. saying. Like our, our ignorance is going to be, um, what holds us back there, but it's an interesting conversation, man. I, I, I definitely, I think I did, Change my mind throughout the end of the podcast. I think with Did social media, I think with social media, um, self awareness bringing a full circle. This is self awareness. Yes. It's because yes. like, I don't, I don't fucking care if social media is net negative or like I, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like it doesn't, it's not going to immediately affect me and like exactly. my my opinion on myself or anything like that or what other people think <laughs> about me. But it's just like yeah, I as a whole, I think I can see. I, I need to give it some more thought. I need to, we need to revisit this. We'll go for round two and then I'll come back with notes. We can do it like a presidential <laughs> yes, debate. Right. We can go back and forth. I would, dude, I was, I was hoping you wouldn't change your mind because what I thought could be a super fucking fascinating podcast would be uh, <laughs> all about this topic with two other people who are more experts in other areas, whether it's psychology, whether it's human development, whether yeah. it's like sociology, you know, I'm not sure what, what could be interesting, but like having two experts who also disagree on this topic and having you and I who disagree on this topic. I think that'd be super fascinating to, <laughs> that, that uh, to do fun. that. But <laughs> that's how, That sounds excellent, actually. Oh, man. But now that you're on my side, no, it's all at the window. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure something out. We'll figure out something to argue about. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, always, man. Yeah. All right, great. Um, Alex, this is wonderful. Let, uh, let people know where, uh, where they can find out more about you and, and what you do. Yeah, man. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's just Alex Cartmill. <laughs> Social uh, media. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that you, that would get you. Um, I spend all my time on Facebook and Instagram. So it just, <laughs> that's, no, but that's, that's, that's about it. <laughs> he said, um, no, but seriously, that's where you can seriously, find me. <laughs> that's the only place that you can find me. Uh, I no longer have my website. I have email, but don't email me. Um, <laughs> I'm always happy to connect with social media, man. I mean, I love the connection of social media. Right. That's how why we're friends. I was gonna say we wouldn't I have mean, this conversation probably without social. Hundred percent. Yeah. I didn't mean to come across as social is all bad because I think there's no, a it's, ton of ton of positives, and I use it. I mean, I don't post that much, but sure. I I love using it for connection and yeah. for conversation. I mean, it's fucking great. So I always love connecting with people, um, whether online or in person. So absolutely, definitely, absolutely, definitely always reach out if if 
you have the urge. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I think Just so like too. I did to you, I think. It yes. Didn't, it, yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's uh, that's why we're here. That's why I we're was here. like, you're you're a great guy. Uh, we're on a similar vibration wavelength. We think similarly. Like yes. I want to connect with this person, and now that's it. And now, we're and now we're, we're going to make out soon enough. It's going to be great. And now um, I'm okay. on the couch next to you and okay. we'll get the night going. <laughs> All right. Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, Alex, we'll do this again soon. Uh, again, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Really appreciate it.